All right, everyone, welcome back. Today's episode, um, we're going to be talking a lot about rolling. Um, one of the best tips I can give you on rolling is do not buy the cheap rollers. Um, I know it's overwhelming at Home Depot. We see all the different kinds and brands of rollers. Uh, the cheap ones are the ones you see here, the better, best. They're all mainly junk. Um, and this is an example of what happens. You can see that little thread in there. So always want to stick to the big name brand like Wooster and Purdy. Um, and then even then, we there are chances of getting these little threads in your paint. So this is a little t trick I have. <clears throat> I'll get a couple feet blue tape when your roller is on the roller frame. And you just see what I'm doing here. This help gets a lot of the loose threads off. Um, you can see here, I hold up to the camera. Towards the bottom there, you can see a lot of those little threads. Doesn't look like much here, but that can really mess up um, a good paint job. So it's always good to do that whenever you have a new roller. And I prefer these purdy, uh, purdy roller handles, and I prefer to use that grit there. I don't like using these pans. It's just another thing to clean up. You foot step in it, and so these are the grits here. They just go inside the five gallon bucket, <clears throat> and I won't get much in the cutting in here but I like to use about a four inch brush and a small gallon bucket to cut out of and like I said I won't be going too into depth but this is just a quick video of cutting in before you roll. Okay now moving into the rolling part um, I like to first go ahead load up my roller with paint and then I like to first get a little bit off of my roller so I'll just go ahead and throw some up on the wall right here then I can go ahead and get as close as I can from my brush so I can hide those brush marks with the roller marks. And these roller marks are called uh, stipples. So here I am just rolling. Um, as you can see, I'm working from left to right and I'm also putting pressure on from left to right. So I'm pushing down more on the right. And the, well, this basically helps eliminate roller lines uh, if you're not putting this counter pressure on you will see those marks and you always want to make sure the counter pressure you're putting on doesn't loosen your roller like on my roll pull here if I'm pushing the opposite direction it could come untwisted and loose uh, but sometimes you got to see it right there I got to flip it around so I can get really tight now it's also important to dip and get a lot of paint on there frequently. You don't want to dry roll, that dry rolling, that's hard to say, um, is basically when you don't have enough paint on your roller and you're basically just wasting time. It, you, you know, you gotta really load these things up. Not too much, you'll have runs, but you wanna make sure you have plenty of paint on there. And as you just saw, I did tape off the top of that light, not for cutting in or anything, that's not what tape's for. Um, basically, when you're rolling like this, no matter what you do, you will always have little driplets, also called uh, stipples, uh, fall down everywhere. And especially with that black light, you will have paint all over that thing. Even if you don't have a drip, you will have these little tiny dots all over. So th this is, you know, kind of like I said, the very basics of rolling. Um, it just takes a lot of time and learning. Um, as you saw there, I just picked out junk in the paint this paint was actually pretty old should have been uh, strained but here you can see up close the difference of brushing and rolling and all the stuff in the paint that should have been strained but we will cover that in a different video this is just the plain simple basics of rolling and a quick couple tips to help you get a good professional job so make sure you like the video subscribe to my channel and we'll have more painting videos coming out soon